Welcome back, Seth Bling here. You are looking at an Atari 2600 emulator that I built in Minecraft. This is vanilla Minecraft. There are no mods, plugins, or resource packs. This whole thing is running on about 2000 command blocks. You can see them all down here. There's a lot of them. Um, but yeah, they are running this entire emulator. It uses this giant chunk of dirt and stone, as well as this screen here, which is being used to display the game. And so here you can see it's currently running the Atari 2600 version of Donkey Kong. This may look a little bit different than the Donkey Kong you're used to from the arcade. It's a little bit more simplistic, as were many Atari 2600 games. But uh, if you watch this video, you'll learn a lot about just how primitive the Atari 2600 was and how ridiculously hard it was to program for. So, yeah, like like I said, here we have Donkey Kong. Uh, you may notice this little armor stand. Of course, this is a Seth Bling video, so there's an armor stand kind of flying across the screen, drawing pixels to the screen. Back in the day, we had CRT monitors, cathode ray tube monitors, or TVs, and they worked by scanning across the screen with an electron beam, drawing pixels to the screen. And so this armor stand is that scanning beam, and it is drawing pixels to the screen. You may notice it's going very slow. That's true. In fact, the original Atari 2600 drew frames to the screen at 60 frames per second. This emulator is drawing frames at about 60 frames every four hours. I have a little time lapse that I have to show you just how slow it's going. After about three minutes, it had drawn the first frame. You can see the number of seconds elapsed on the right-hand side of the screen. There's a weird half sprite that's supposed to be Mario at the bottom of the screen, and the barrel starts rolling. Uh, one hour, about two hours in, I watch an episode of West Wing and forget to take a screenshot. Then about five hours in, I take a nap. Here I spend a couple hours worrying that the barrel is gonna roll off the right side of the screen and that the emulator isn't working correctly, but eventually it does start dropping. About 15 hours in, DK drops his second barrel, and here's the final screenshot, 18 hours in. So yeah, pretty slow. So the other thing you may notice is that it's a very vertical screen. It's not this normal aspect ratio you'd expect from a CRT TV. That's because I'm drawing square pixels. Each, each pixel is, you know, a, a block of wool or a stained clay or whatever, uh, whereas the TV screens drew much more stretched out, wide pixels. And so here's what it would look like on the actual TV, a lot wider, but I'm drawing them with square pixels just because, you know, Minecraft, it, it's a lot easier to do that. So that's what's going on there. Uh, so the way this works, uh, it's emulating a 6502 processor. Uh, the 6502 processor was in the Atari 2600. It was also in the NES, Nintendo Entertainment System, as well as the Apple II, some of the Commodore computers. It was in a lot of things. So here it's being used to run the emulator. Uh, it's sort of the basis, the, the processor that's running everything. Uh, this big chunk of dirt and stone is the memory space that it has access to. So a 6502 was capable of addressing 64 kilobytes of RAM. And that's, that's what you're seeing here. But the Atari didn't use all of that. In fact, it couldn't. Uh, it addressed four kilobytes of ROM. So this is what would appear on the cartridge, and you can see it over there as this big chunk of stone. And in fact, I have a couple other cartridges prepared to show you. Uh, this one's Donkey Kong. I'll have Space Invaders and Pac-Man. Um, so it used four kilobytes of ROM and 128 bytes of RAM. And you'll see that up here. <laughs> You didn't mishear me, it's bytes, not kilobytes, not megabytes, 128 bytes of RAM. Uh, and that was used to run the whole system. So very, very small. It's kind of insane how little they had to work with. Uh, also, it's drawing it to this screen. Uh, there was sort of a video card in the cartridge and basically every single line that it drew to the screen, it had to load new data into the video card. So really the processor spent most of its time drawing stuff into the video card. And right now it's in what's called V blank. It's not drawing anything to the screen because basically the electron beam needed time to scroll back up to the top of the screen. But in a moment, it'll start drawing the second frame of the gameplay. And you'll start to see uh, stuff getting drawn up here to these buffers that, that well, again, you'll see them in a moment, but, uh, any time it wanted to draw something that was different from the previous line, if it wanted to draw something that was the same as previous line, it could just leave it alone. But it had to run processor instructions to draw anything different. And so you can see it's using the two sprites here to display 
uh, this is actually a timer, I think. Maybe so. Actually, it's a yeah, I think it's a timer, but uh, and it's displaying the wrong the wrong value because my emulator is not perfect. <laughs> and here it's displaying Donkey Kong here and Pauline here, uh, using the two sprites. And then it also had something called a play field, which it could use to draw uh, all this purple stuff. And the barrel is another sprite. But yeah, it had to, every single line it had to draw different stuff. Uh, the processor was not very fast, so it was very demanding to change the data every single line. And I can show you that um, by loading up a new game. And, uh, and we'll take a look at RAM and, and just how little RAM it had and how all that stuff is used. So that was Donkey Kong. I'm going to load up a new cartridge. It'll copy all of this stuff into the actual processor's emulator. And you can, you can actually see it change all of the data that's in the, that's in the ROM space. And so now it's running Space Invaders. So let me teleport myself back up near the screen. Right now it's not drawing anything to the screen. It's running some initialization routines, which are, well, right now it's actually just clearing out RAM. So it's writing a bunch of zeros to everywhere that is in this first little bit of, of RAM. So you can see it clearing it out. Again, the dirt is zeros, the stone are ones, the stone <laughs> blocks are ones. And if you ever wondered what they, what people mean by saying computers just deal with zeros and ones, this is a very visual representation of what's going on. So first it's starting out by clearing out RAM, but then it's going to start writing stuff into RAM, uh, sort of initializing a bunch of stuff that it needs for, for the game. And one of the really cool things that this is the reason why I'm showing you Space Invaders is it's going to draw these blast shields into RAM. It needed to keep track of blast shields because they could be damaged by your own bullets or by bullets from the enemies. And so even though the amount of RAM is just this gold block to the end of the, the block. That's all the RAM it had, and it's using a pretty sizable portion of that with just keeping track of the blast shields. Um, it had to do that, right? I think, uh, think this memory here or this memory here is also used to keep track of which aliens are alive. So really a lot of memory is being used up by some very simple things. Uh, the stuff earlier before that, everything from the diamond block over here is being used, it's not RAM, and uh, but it's being used by the processor to communicate with the video card, with the audio card uh, reading from the joystick. Now I don't have an audio card or joystick hooked up, but if I did, it would it would do that. But um, it's drawing stuff to to the screen by using um, this memory stuff right here. And so you can actually probably see in a moment, uh, start to see it drawing stuff to the screen. Well, I don't I don't know what it's drawn yet, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, so, so this is, man, it's such a small amount of RAM. It's just insane. Uh, you know, computers these days have gigabytes, billions of bytes of RAM. It's at 128 bytes. Uh, you can also, I can show you, oh, here we go. It's displaying stuff on the screen. Let's actually let the game catch up a little bit. So those are some of the sprites it's drawing, the aliens up here. Uh, I can show you the emulator running each processor instruction. So I'm going to turn game rule debug true on. And now, uh, if I, if you look at the screen, you can see every single processor instruction. It's running about 20 processor instructions per second, which is very slow relative to the original hardware. That's why this whole thing is going so slow overall. Uh, the original hardware ran at about a megahertz, which is a million clock cycles per second. It takes somewhere between two and seven clock cycles to run a processor instruction. And a processor instruction does something like add or subtract, read something from memory, store something to memory, that sort of thing. So a very basic operation, and it can only do 20 of these per second uh, with my emulator. And each clock cycle of the processor corresponded to three pixels on the screen. So I'm actually going to go ahead and halt uh, the processor. And so we can see I've stopped the processor, it's no longer running, and this is where the scanning electron beam is, and it's you know in a drawing the screen. Uh, I can go ahead and run a single processor instruction. You can see how many pixel, pixels get drawn. So for each processor instruction, the game is drawing somewhere between 3 and 21 pixels. And so that's just like not a lot of time to do things you need to do because, again, the the, the processor needed to draw new, load new data into the video card every single scan line. And so here's uh, 20, 20 processor instructions. You can see 20 processor instructions is roughly one scan line. Maybe more like 22 or something. But not a lot of, not a lot of processor instructions to load in a whole new set of data, change colors. Uh, and you had to actually you know, do the game logic too, if anything 
needed uh you know need to be run so <laughs> it's it's just to me it's insane that anybody was able to write any reasonable game for for this system just because of how basic and how slow and just the the lack of resources available and the difficulty of drawing all this stuff to the screen um so i'm gonna you know uh turn it turn it back on let the let the processor run again uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty crazy to me. Uh, before I load in the last game, which is going to be Pac-Man, I want to turn off debug first. <laughs> uh, let's go to game mode three. And so we have the three cartridges, Donkey Kong Space Invaders, Pac-Man. But I've also unwound these cartridges. So there's 16 lines of 256 bytes, which is four kilobytes. So I'm going to run along this line here in spectator mode and we can see the entire cartridge as I go along and mostly it looks like kind of random data you might see some repeated structures now and then but also any visual data graphical data that the game wanted to display needed to be somewhere in these cartridges so at some point here we'll start to see the sprites that the game uh, would load in from the cartridge and load you know into RAM or into the graphical memory in the video card and yeah so a bit of data okay the processor just got wrecked because i'm flying away but here we can start to see some sprites and if you turn your head to the left tilt your head to the left you can see this is mario <laughs> uh, mario here's mario running he's running to the you know i guess he's running upwards if, if you haven't tilted your head but uh that's what he's doing here's i'm not sure what those are um these are some beams again you have to tilt your head to the left if you want to see what i'm talking about uh Let's see, up here, there's, looks like those might be some sprites, I'm not sure. Um, here's Donkey Kong. Uh, he hasn't been stretched out in RAM, or sorry, he hasn't been stretched out yet, but he gets stretched out when he gets drawn to the screen. Um, these are beams that get drawn to the screen. Here's the numbers 0 through 9. A barrel, a side view of the barrel. Uh, that's a fireball. <laughs> really cool, you can see more tilted beams. Here's Pauline. The lady you're trying to save, um, yeah, more tilted beams. So everything the game does has to be represented somewhere in these ROMs. And so I was focusing on oh, here's some numbers I think, um, for in the middle middle line here. Oh, here's some other numbers from Pac-Man. But yeah, um, so that's <laughs> uh, God. It's really cool to be able to see a, like visualization of how all that works. You know, people talk about zeros and ones a lot, but actually being able to see the zeros and the ones and how those are arranged is pretty cool. So I'm going to load up Pac-Man. I'm going to skip through all the initialization stuff it does, where it's clearing out memory and all that, and I'm going to go ahead and, and just skip to the part where it's drawing the frame. All right, so I just started drawing Pac-Man to the screen. Now you're going to have to pre prepare yourself because the Atari 26 version. Sorry, Atari 2600 version of Pac-Man is a lot worse than the version you're used to seeing in arcades and all that. Uh, you'll notice that all the pellets are these like dashes. They're not they're not dots anymore. Uh, this version only has a single ghost, and you'll see that get drawn to the screen a little bit later. Um, <clears throat> if you haven't read about the great North American video game crash of 1983, Pac-Man was one of the games that's widely credited for causing a complete crash of the video games market from 1983 until the NES was released, the N Nintendo Entertainment System was released in 1986. Uh, that and, and the ET game for Atari 2600. But uh, this one only has a single ghost. It's just it's just a much worse version than the, than the arcade version. It still sold a lot of copies, but yeah, here's the ghost. I think he's being drawn in the wrong spot. So. Yeah, my emulator is not is not perfect. Uh, you know, this ghost is being drawn in the wrong spot. I think he's supposed to be in the middle of the box. There's no joystick hooked up. There's no audio card. But uh, all in all, I'm still really proud of this uh, this thing and how it's able to actually draw the game. It's able to draw you know many frames, and draw animations. It's able to emulate an entire processor and all the RAM and ROM systems that go into that. Um, I'm very proud of this. I don't know if anybody has ever created an emulator within another game before. I certainly have never seen one. And so, man, I'm just so, so proud of this. And I wanted to share it with you guys. I really hope you enjoyed it too. I hope you learned something about 
just how rudimentary this this system was and how hard the programmers must have had to work and how smart they must have had to be in order to be able to program games for this system. Let's press escape and let it catch up. Now, if you want to try this out for yourself and uh, and check it out, there is you can do that. There's a there's a world file in the video description. You just download it, load it up in Minecraft 1.11, and it will work. Now, I would recommend changing your uh, render distance to something like 20 chunks or 18 chunks. Uh, if you don't, the the emulator may break just because of how chunks are loaded in Minecraft. And uh, yeah, the, also, so the the three cartridges that I showed you here, there's Donkey Kong and Space Invaders and Pac-Man. Um, but uh, in addition to those, there's also an MC Edit filter that I'm, I'm linking in the video description. And so you can load in your own ROMs with this MC Edit filter. Uh, it only works for four kilobyte cartridges. So if it's any more or less than four kilobytes, it's not going to work. So just be aware of that, but it will work for a lot of different games to varying degrees. But yeah, check it out for yourself. I really hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.